there, there is no losing for me, bro. There is no losing in this fight for me. Because at the end of the day, I get the answer. Either I was good enough or I wasn't. And that's all that's I ever wanted. Want. The first pay-per-view of 2023 will go live in a couple of weeks. For the most part, this Brazil card was neglected, but all things considered, we've ended up with a pretty decent event, right? Oh, Harper said, Gilbert Burns, uh, let's do it in Brazil. It's January 21st. Two top welterweights clash to decide the next contender in an already stacked division. I'm taking it very seriously, but I'm looking for a finish, you know, especially in Brazil. The final chapter in the rivalry that defined an otherwise dormant division. It's one of those unique, freaky deals where... Who doesn't want to see that fight again? Two of the baddest men on the planet fighting for the vacant strap. If you know, you f know, you're already hurting. Let's f go! Welcome to the fighting business. Come along as we dive deep into the first pay per view of 2023 and its three most expected fights of the card. Here's hoping UFC 283 sets a good start for the shows to follow. The card has got the talent to succeed. The top three fights are especially interesting. Let's get it on. Neil Magny versus Gilbert Burns. I mean, shoot or shoot, right? You called out the number five guy in the welterweight division. And Gilbert Burns, think you're gonna get that fight? Oh, 100%, man. I think I, uh, Gilbert Burns is a, a tough competitor. He's always game to go out there and compete. Uh, he hasn't fought in quite some time, so uh, I don't think he'll pass up an opportunity to go out there and compete in Brazil in front of his home crowd, so I'm pretty confident I'll get that fight. In a featured bout, former title challenger and fight of the year component, Gilbert Burns returned to the octagon to take on perennial top 10 contender, Neil Magny. Um, I know for a fact I, I can out grapple Gilbert Burns as far as like wrestling goes. I know for a fact I can out strike Gilbert Burns. So um, just make sure that I keep all those tools sharp when I show up on fight night to get it done. Magny has been in the UFC since 2012. And while he has yet to challenge for the belt, the guy's a respectable fighter with an underrated resume. He has been a fixture in the top 15 since forever. But on the other hand, if there was someone whose stock went up in defeat and truly did show that he is one of the elite of the elite, it was yeah. Gilbert Dorino Burns. Gilbert Burns is one of the best welterweights on planet Earth, and a massive step up in competition for Magni. Despite being a former lightweight, Burns is a heavy hitter and more than capable of going all five rounds, never mind three. And you can forget trying to match this dude on the ground, just don't even try. That's what's interesting about Gilbert is that he is an elite Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, but his striking is fucking world class. That said, the height and reach discrepancy is something Durinho has not yet dealt with. Magni will definitely work his jab, but the question is whether he can hurt Burns enough to keep him away. The size difference will also pose a problem for Burns during clinch exchanges, leaving him open to knees and elbows. Gilbert Burns is somewhat of a fresh face at 170, but the guy is 36 years old. A loss might spell an end to his championship dreams. Similarly, Magni is 35, and if he doesn't score the victory here, he will not get a top 5 fight ever again. Regardless, I'm here hoping for a banger. Knowing these two gentlemen, this one has the ability to make us jump our seats. I'm calling it now. Brendan Moreno versus Davison Figueiredo 4. Figueroa and Brandon Moreno are going to be fighting for a fourth time at UFC 283. The co-main event is a flyweight title fight between eternal rivals Brandon Moreno and Davison Figueiredo. This will be the first ever quadrilogy championship fight in UFC history. And despite seeing this three times already, the hype surrounding the fourth fight eclipses all prior installments. Out of all of those fights, this is the one that people are going to want to see the most because the history, the backstory, the back and forth, the shit talk. The record is 1-1-1, one, one, and one. one victory apiece and a draw. And at this point, MMA fans desperately need closure. The first fight was competitive. The second time, it was all Brandon Moreno. The two fought another closely contested fight in the trilogy, and Figueiredo once again reclaimed the flyweight championship. That was supposed to be the end, but Moreno got his hands on the interim title, and here we are. This channel has covered the ongoing saga extensively. If you're interested in diving even deeper into the rivalry between the two flyweights, check out the in-depth rivalry we posted a few weeks back. But after three fights, we know that these two are neck and neck when it comes to skill. Or I deserve to be the best, you know, the division. I, I, I deserve to be the world, the world champion of the world, the world champion of the world. <laughs> a lot of uh, different feelings. These ones give me a lot of peace in my soul, man. If Figueiredo decides to brawl, Moreno will meet him in the middle. If Moreno initiates the grappling, Figueiredo will oblige. 
They're all but evenly matched in all areas, and that is what made each prior encounter so thrilling. Oh my god, this is a tough one. I like Moreno, man. He's another NMF. I'm gonna go for Moreno. Uh, I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna go with Davis and Figueredo. But coming into this fourth fight, I think we should highlight the difference in age. Brendan Moreno is in his prime, only 29 years of age. His rival, on the other hand, is 35, and in lighter weight classes. That number means a lot. The God of War has been able to deliver impressive performances over the past couple of years, but is this the fight where it starts to show? They fought three times in the past, and yet we still have no idea who to truly favor here. That is what makes this rivalry such a treat to watch. This time, however, we will get a definite answer, and this division-defining rivalry will finally be put to the rest. Glover Teixeira versus Jamal Hill. Right away you stepped up. How excited were you to get that call, Jamal? I was ecstatic, you know, I was through the roof. It's just, this is what I've been waiting for, you know, the opportunity to uh, fight, for, fight for a title. You know, this is the question that I've always wanted to answer. Am I good enough to be champion? Finally, the main event of UFC 283 will be a light heavyweight clash between former champion Glover Teixeira and relative newcomer Jamal Hill. The vacant championship will be on the line. How did we end up here? It's been a wild, crazy, somewhat suspicious ride, but we're getting a championship main event. It is once again old school versus new school, so let's just get into it. It's a very interesting question. 205 pounds, guys, is Jamal Hill the best thing that could happen? Glover Teixeira is 43 years of age, while his opponent is 12 years younger. In addition to that, Hill is longer, bigger, less damaged, and he has finished his last three opponents by KO. He'll be the much faster fighter, and with the wars Glover has gone through, one precise shot to the head and Hill will become champion. That has been the popular prediction for Glover's last few fights, yet the guy defies the odds. Each time, he hangs in there. Can Jamal Hill beat Glover Teixeira? I mean, I, I gotta tell you, that's not a thought that I've had until right now. There's no question that the former champion has passed his physical prime, but with more than 40 professional fights, Teixeira is the much more experienced fighter between the two. With his destructive ground game, serviceable striking, and relentless pressure, Glover has beaten a number of next-generation light heavyweights. As inspiring as that sounds, Father Time always catches up. Teixeira just went through the most grueling fight of his life against Hiri Prohaska at UFC 275, and the damage keeps piling up. Jamal Hill is the perfect candidate to finally end this fairy tale run of Glover Teixeira. As mentioned before, he has the attributes over Glover, long enough to maintain distance and pick him apart, and powerful enough to keep the former champion wary. Unlike Yiri, who had no problem engaging Glover on the ground, Hill, a much less experienced grappler, will look to keep it on the feet and find the knockout blow. One takedown, however, and Hill might not be the same fighter for the rest of the night. Once again, it will be striker versus grappler, old versus new, youth versus experience. I said all this during the lead-up to the Yiri vs. Glover fight, and we were rewarded with a classic. With the vacant title on the line, I have a feeling Jamal Hill and Glover Teixeira will give us one hell of a show to start the year. A fight of the night contender between two of the most deserving welterweights. The never-ending saga of the most important rivalry in UFC flyweight history will finally find his conclusion. And the vacant light heavyweight belt is once again on the line for the second consecutive pay-per-view in a row. This time, we get the experienced veteran of 43 years of age hoping to continue his unique run when he faces off against the flashiest knockout artist in the division. Also on the card is MMA legend Mauricio Shogun Hua, who will be fighting for the final time. Add in Jessica Andrade, Paul Craig, and Johnny Walker, and it's something to look forward to. It all goes down January 21st. That being said, I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.